All right, so welcome back. And today we're speaking with Jana, J-A-N-N-A, right? Yes. And uh, you wanted to come in and talk about a couple different things, right? Yeah. Well, I have a heck of a story. Okay. I'm a heck of a survivor, a whole recovery savage. And I'm also promoting a local event that's happening next month that I would like to talk about in greater detail and share with the community as well. Outstanding. So let's start in the beginning. In the beginning. In the beginning. Jenna was born. And her parents decided they couldn't take care of her, and she ended up at her grandparents' house at one and a half. So I'm a product of a crackhead and an alcoholic. My grandparents pulled me out of that situation, pulled me over to Fairfax County instead of Prince William, and I grew up there in a very affluent, what do you call it, first class Okay, upper Whatever. class, upper middle class. Yeah, and um, I would spend my weekends in Manassas at my mom's trap house. Hmm. And... Sorry. It's okay. Sorry. Everybody's got a life. It's my son's best friend. I don't know why he doesn't just call his phone. I'm not even there. 15-year-olds, man. On both phones. You heard mm -hmm. both ring. But... So, I spent... My daytime, getting straight A's, playing soccer, clarinet, piano, violin, perfect on paper. Mm -hmm. I speak German fluently, and I was supposed to be like a doctor or a lawyer. What happened was I started to find out that my mom was an addict, and she was in and out of rehab. Because I didn't know the house I was staying at Manassas on the weekend was actually like a whole freaking trap house. Because <laughs> I guess they kept it clean until like my teenage years. Mm -hmm. And um, when I got a car is when I stopped listening to all the crazy German lady rules because my grandma was straight off the boat from Berlin and pretty strict. Okay. Rest in peace, Mima. But she's also the reason why I am the way I am and I have everything that I have now because she worked her butt off to make sure we were all okay. And that's where you learned German from? Mm-hmm. Okay. I've been speaking German since I was like four years old. Hmm. I went to German governor school. I was president of German club and German honor society. Um. I don't really utilize it as much as I should as a skill. Right. Because I feel like there's not a whole lot of use for it in your day to day, but there's definitely jobs that you could use it a lot. Oh, yeah. And like my cousin in Germany has a security firm. I'm sure I could work with him with everything I do with blogging, SEO, mm -hmm. web design, all mm -hmm. that. But I, that's actually a good idea. So <laughs> maybe I'll call him when we're right. done. But yeah, so I graduated at 17 with 21 college credits. At that point, I knew my mom was a full blown addict. And, um, I swear I was never going to do drugs. Okay, I, hold on, hold on. 17 with college credits. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? Like you finished high school with enough co credits to get into college? or I you've took advanced placement APs. So my junior and senior year were all AP credits, and I had to pass the exam. So walking in, I went to Virginia Tech. I had 21 credits already. So on paper, I should have been on the fast track to graduate in three years and move on to graduate school, law school, whatever. But what had happened was... <laughs> mm -hmm. There's always one of those, right? My mom died in rehab when I was 19. Mm, wow. And uh, it hit me like a freight train. And I found out about like a lot of our family history that I was not made aware of up to that point. And it kind of crushed me in a sense. So I was self-medicating. And then I was kind of chasing her for a while. Like She was a hustler, right? So I would go to the same spots, meet the same people... I was trying to find her, mm -hmm. and I could never. But, I mean, in that process of about 2006 to 2016, I was on a really dark path. I got in trouble in many counties in the state, hustling, drugs, guns, whatever, burglary, you know, you name it. It was a street life. So criminal stuff. And I loved it. Like, I was good at it because I didn't fit in in that world. You know what I'm saying? But um, I was diagnosed with cervical cancer when I was 20, shortly after she passed. I was also on campus the day of the Virginia Tech shootings, by the way, which all happened in that same little bubble. Um, and my boyfriend and I at the time decided to get married and have my son. But we were almost effective strangers, you know, and that marriage didn't quite work out. Uh, we're still friends now. It was a hell of a custody battle, which is what brought me to rehab, actually. Um when I started actually using needles towards okay. the end of my addiction, my grandparents took my tox reports 
from a surgery where I almost lost my whole hand and they gave it to my ex-husband and his lawyer in custody court and they told me that I had to go to rehab, take a parenting class and get all that handled before I could step foot back in court in Blacksburg, Virginia. And okay, that so was let's rewind. 2015. <laughs> let's rewind a little bit back to like what was your drug of choice? When did you start using, you know, talk a little bit about the I had phases. So I started off like every normal kid in high school, pot and alcohol, right? Ecstasy was a big thing summer after senior year. Then it was Coke. And then I didn't really do anything but weed or drink until like when I was getting separated and going through my first divorce. And then it was pills. So it started with like the benzos, uh, Klonopin, Xanax. What's the other one? I don't even remember, lorazepam, whatever. Mm -hmm. Then it turned into pain pills. And opiates, that is where I met, like, my maker, my match. And, mm -hmm. like, that's when I started, like, going out of state to Detroit to pick large love subs up for very little, bringing them back to Virginia. Like what kind? Roxy 30s then. Um, that was Real 30s, real, real pharmaceutical yes, 30s? this was then. Mm -hmm. So I did that. I got in trouble a whole lot in Blacksburg, lost my townhouse, got shipped back from Blacksburg up to Fairfax, and I tried to do it there with like finding the scripts and the people and like all that, but the dope game was in Fairfax. So we just started going to DC and it was cheaper, stronger, and then hey dope. Mm -hmm. And then it was PCP and then it was crack and then everything that comes with the city. Mm -hmm. And basically anything, like I was like a garbage can, anything I could get my hands on and make money off of, like I was doing it. So, and I didn't want to work for anyone else. I didn't want normal hours. I liked fast money. I liked the lifestyle. I liked the clout, the power that came with Being it. Being that guy. You know? And I mean, everyone watches Scarface and like, and you're living that life and you're in it. And you know, it, it, it was very like, very romanticized. And then like, again, like the freight trains come and then you have nothing. And then all the people that owe you like tens of thousands of dollars, where are they? Nowhere. So when I'm telling you, I got dragged out, knocked down, put up wet. And then all I had was my family that was taking my medical records and giving them to someone they shouldn't be. It, it was dirty, but it needed to happen. And I'm grateful for it because they saved my life. And look at what I've done now. Mm -hmm. Like I spent the 30 days at Edge Hill, moved right into Oxford, became president of my house. When I moved here, I had nothing but a suitcase and my driver's license. And I worked at IHOP, slinging pancakes. <laughs> until I bought a car and then I got a job at WEL Environmental and then I finally I had to drive down to Virginia Tech and beg them to let me back in because I had failed out so many times and I sat there in front of that review board and I was telling them about like Oxford and like I don't I don't do heroin anymore and you know and they were all like cold stone killer faces and mm -hmm. I was like I'm fucked like I'm never getting back into school like all those credits I just have to transfer lose out whatever but then they called me and they said, you can come in, but you have to take one class at a time because everyone knows that me, I do too much. So that's what would happen. I would sign up for like 21 credits and pass like two and fail the rest. Hmm. So I finished 2016 to 2018. I actually spent my last two semesters doing independent study on the biopolitics of addiction and then incarceration versus treatment as like the answer for addiction. They're both 40 page papers. They're pretty good. If I might say so myself. Okay. But, um, so I graduated 2018, bought a house in Lake Holiday. I was in a recovery romance that went all the way south. It just ended about a year ago, a little over a year ago. And I probably will never date anyone in recovery ever again. I don't want to say that, but like it, it was scarring to be someone who's constantly working on yourself to be with someone who's not quite working a program per se. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I'm a realtor. I got my real estate license two years ago. I've worked in almost every industry, been a project manager for large environmental spills, two large companies. Then COVID happened, they laid us off. I worked for Empire Today as an installation coordinator for floors. I was at Shenandoah Memorial Park as the family counselor. And then I did a funeral for the owner of a local women's rehab. And she was a close friend of mine. And she wanted me to come be a counselor there and rehab and recovery is my dream. Like I want to open my own rehab, Reiki retreat farm. Like I have a loan application out on land right now. 
that I don't want it to be a place that puts you back out on the street. I want it to be places where people can stay mm-hmm. and work the industries and have a safe place and grow life skills. And like, if whenever they're ready, they can go and reproduce or, you know, hop into that industry. Right. Like a halfway house with less limitations. Yeah. Like a homestead, like, you know, like community, like you're safe here. Like when your insurance is up, we're not putting you back on the street. Cause I can't tell you how many people I've seen be put back out and they like can't get a job or they can't find housing. Then they're right back doing the drugs that they were trying to get clean from. And a lot of people don't know this. Like when you get clean, your thresholds drop. So you're like a hundred times more likely to OD Mm -hmm. when you've been clean for 30 days and you try to do the normal amount that you were using. So I've seen a lot of people die. I've had a lot of, Quote, like my mom died when I was 19 in rehab on the floor when she was trying to get clean. Then they treated her like crap, the doctors at Fairfax Hospital and all this stuff. And I guess that's mostly like why I'm doing all of this is for her. And now I have my own story and I just really have this deep need to help other people and make the world a better place. That's weird how one of those that seems like a big thing that happens for most people that do get straight. You get to the other side of it and you feel like, you want other people to be there. You want other people to enjoy it as well. Because yeah. you know the hell you went through and the hell that they're going through has got to be similar. Yeah. I mean, it's, it might not always be the same things or the same walk, but it's the same feelings. It's the same problems. Mm-hmm. And, like, anyone who's not living to their full potential or, like, numbing out or not dealing with their triggers, like, like I see the good in people, like I see what they can be, and I like want to try to give that to them because people can't always see that for themselves, especially when mm-hmm. you're in those dark places that we've all been in, you know. And someone helped me, so many people helped me, like my sponsors, people in my network, my family. <laughs> as crazy as they are, right. <laughs> but you know, like no one gave up on me, so right. I'm not giving. Did up Did they on give up on you while you were using? Like the same family members, where were they while you were using? So. I was still living with my grandparents after I got shipped back from Blacksburg and I got in trouble a bunch and they were like supportive, but like not emotionally. And it was getting to the point at the very end that they were going to serve me an eviction notice. Like, I hope my people doesn't hear this, but he was actually like draining the toilet and testing my urine and like, Hmm. it was deep. And he said he was trying to cut my hair and test me, but he like didn't want to wake me up. They found so many things and, like, confiscated them. Like, when I tell you my grandparents were, like, the Gestapo, they were, like, the Gestapo. Wow. And, like, love them for it, whatever. But, I mean, it was like that my whole life. My mom used to read my diary. She used to talk to all my friends, print out my instrument. I didn't really have that privacy, so I always bucked, you know. Mm. And, yeah, I mean, my grandfather, my grandma passed away when I was nine months clean. Like, it was kind of weird because... It's like I had gotten the office job at WEL and the insurance. I wasn't working at IHOP anymore. It was my first week of work. And then it's like she was like, okay, she's good. Like, I can go now. You know, that's the way I try to view it. Because she's like a very strong woman. And mm-hmm. like our family's missing that spot. I'm trying to fill it. It's really hard. I didn't know how hard it was till she left. But, yeah. So regardless of like, you know, they're trying to beat you in line, basically. Not physically, but yeah. line you up. We're going to do these things. We're going to be invasive on your privacy and try to set limitations for you and it didn't work at all huh sometimes it did sometimes it didn't like if it, it, i definitely was humbled like ultimately in 2015 they won <laughs> like, yeah i was like okay right. i'm done my car was stolen wrecked left in dc i had absolutely nothing all the people that i thought were my friends my people mm-hmm. with all those thousands of dollars gone and all i had was my blood and the people that I was so, like, angry with or that had been hurting me. Mm -hmm. It was, they were trying to protect me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I didn't view it as such until much later. Much later. Yeah, it's definitely hard to see it right then. I don't know, I was a big man. I'm a Sagittarius. I'm feisty. mm -mm. Mm. You don't tell me nothing. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) But now I listen. So what's today's look like? Like, what's a day look like for you other than super busy with everything that you do? How do you, you know, do your addiction services? Like, do you read a book? Do you go to meetings? Do you journal? I journal. I do a lot of Reiki and spiritual healing. A lot of my recovery practice is now spiritual. Okay, what is Reiki? Energy healing. It's an ancient Japanese practice. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of your chakras? Mm Mm-hmm. 
So what a healer does is just channel healing from source, Yahweh, God, whatever. It's agnostic. It's meant to not to interfere with your personal religion. The energy through to you. Cleanse your chakras. Align them. If there's anything universally going on, like codes you need to know, like you'll get them. Like you could tell me like you want me to do your knee, right? But if there's something going on with your heart chakra, the energy will go there. But the client also controls it. So when you're in a receiving position, you put your hands up. If it gets to be too intense, because it can get intense. My first session knocked me on my rear end, like blackout. I stood up and I was like, what happened? It was on Zoom from New Jersey. Hmm. It wasn't even in person. And I threw up three times and like, but then I was like set on fire and I left my high paying job to go work at the women's rehab. And like, I had at that point not been comfortable with like leaving a certain level of pay because of the bills that I have now as a responsible recovered adult. So I have a four bedroom house and I have this and I have that and I'm responsible for my child who's now 15. Mm -hmm. But that was the first moment where I felt like I could actually chase my passions again. And two months later, I became attuned and I became a healer and I opened my own business. But so in the mornings I wake up, um, I'll do a meditation. I'm always like zip zooming, like I cook this, feed the animals, get the kid fed, laundry, blah, 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 blah. And then I'm usually emailing because I do so many things with so many different businesses. I have a pretty like I operate by the minute and um, I do try to go to meetings when I can here and there. I don't know if I should say this. You might have to delete this part. Like, I do smoke weed again now. I'm a marijuana. I don't feel like there's anything wrong with that. I don't think there is either, but a lot of people in NA do. Like, there's I mean, only yeah. one group that actually, like, didn't say that it was a whole problem. Like, the women's group that I used to go to, like, they weren't cool about it. So I found this other one, but I honestly haven't been since before Christmas last year because my grandpa was in the so hospital. So what is, what is the reason for the weed? Like, I have weed? IBS. Okay. Um, I also... I'm very like ADHD, da 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 da. So mm -hmm. it helps me stay focused mm -hmm. and calm. Slow you down a little bit, keep that irritation away. Because left to my own devices, I'm like the roadrunner and I will just scatter and mm -hmm. I'll do like half of everything instead of like one by one in breathing. But I will like, I will work until I die. So like, all these jobs I was working last year, the year before, I would work 10 to 6 at one office and then go work 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. at the other and sleep in two-hour spurts and then crash out for three days on my days off. That's not functional. No, it's not healthy either. It's not. Mm -mm. So I also, they found a fibroid in my uterus this year, and I almost, like, lost all of my ladyhood. And it was really bad, but mm. I didn't have health insurance because the company I was working for, both of them, like, they didn't offer it unless you do X, Y, or Z. And it's everything after COVID with companies has just been really, like, employer-based, not employee-based. But I finally got health insurance and come to find out, like, they're like, you need an embolism or you need to have a full-on hysterectomy. And the fact that I'm, like, 36 and that's pretty young to go through all that, I freaked out. And they put me on all these hormones. I broke out like I was on meth. Like, I don't know if you saw my Facebook post, but it was not even a month ago. Like, I had sores everywhere from the magistral. And, like, I felt like that was the worst withdrawal I've ever had was from too many hormones. I'll tell you that. Hmm. Worse than dope, worse than crack, worse than really? Suboxone. Like, it, it, was, it was bad. Like, there was, like, a few days where I didn't know if I was ever going to be myself again. But, like, here I am back at it again. You know, so, mm -hmm. like, my skin's cleared up. I'm starting this event company and launching this large event next month, and it's all, like, coming to me. Um, a lot of days, I played hooky today. I hope my boss doesn't see this. <laughs> but when I am at work, I'm at work, and I'm trying to, like, do my job. But I didn't go today because I want to work on my businesses, and I might not be going back either. So we might need to delete that part, too. Until I send my boss a text message. Right okay, well, I'm probably going to need you to stop saying things that I need to delete. <laughs> You're just making this process take well, longer. my grandpa's no, not doing well, right? So mm -hmm. the same surgery my grandma died from, the stent replacement, Okay. he has upcoming, and he's not breathing well, and he's been, like, up and down. So that's what I've been telling them, that I'm focusing on, like, his health and get everything squared away with him. And, like, my son's here for the summer because I still don't have full custody. I never won. I have visitation, summers, whatever. And, I mean, he's pretty acclimated down there, and he's a great kid. He's an ROTC. Like, he speaks Spanish and German, guitar, drums. He's an artist. Like, 
I've tried to do what I can with him with what time I have, but yanking him up out of there now, it's really nonsensical. I don't think it would be good for him. I mean, if he wanted to come stay with me full time, he's almost 16, you know, he's well right. within his legal rights to yeah, do you so. Yeah, start making choices. But that's originally why I got clean was my custody situation. And like, I want to say around like year three, four, like when I wasn't winning in custody court, like it was a really hard battle for me to like realize that I did all the things and I've sponsored so many women and I've done this. I bought the big house in the gated community. I have this great job and it's not enough. Like they said, you're still an addict and like all of this is temporary for you. Well, guess mm -hmm. what? Five years later, I'm still here. Mm -hmm. Still have my house through mm -hmm. a toxic marriage. So. It is possible. It is. Yeah. I made a post the other day that said, for those that doubt you, fuck them or something like that. There'll exactly. be people that doubt you, fuck them. I mean, there was this guy in the event group yesterday and we're saying no negativity, right? None. We're not accepting mm -hmm. it. We won't let you in. Like we won't tolerate mm -hmm. it. You'll get kicked out. So he said something about, like, I can't fathom paying $20 for a ticket to go chill in the county where we can do it for free. Well, do you have petting zoo? Do you have DJs? Do you have food trucks? Do you have local vendors? Do you have a whole bunch of people and, like, planned activities mm. for kids and adults? What was the purpose of your post, though? Like, what was the purpose of you stopping to take the time to type that out? Well, I don't care even, if you wouldn't pay it, it or not because better. other people might. I said something to him. Like, I was real nice. I was like, you know, it's sad to me that you don't see the effort that we're putting into this because it's a lot of work. Right. It is. Yeah, oh, especially last it. minute. I'm trying to plan a spade tournament that's going to be a pain in my ass. Yeah. But, and, and I was like, you know, maybe you should just go wherever you think is better. And, you know, in so many right, words. Right. And you got to learn how to do that in the comments sometimes and just be like, you know what? Okay. Well, and then he said, I'm waiting for it to get canceled. And I said, you can keep waiting, sunshine. I said, the only thing getting canceled here is you. And I banned right. him. Ain't it? Like, get the fuck and out And then of he here. sent me a personal message calling me an idiot, talking crap about my parents that failed to raise me, that the event's mm. going to fail like my parents that failed to raise me. He called me a loser. Mm. And Where did he get the information like that from? Uh, my parents didn't raise me. I mean, mm. we know this. Like, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Right? I'll tell you that, huh? <laughs> My grandparents did, though, and, like, I am turned out pretty damn well, all the right. things I got. You want to see all the plaques on my wall? Right. You want to see my bank account? Right. <laughs> I'm just kidding, and I'm not like that. But, I mean, for someone to call me a loser that doesn't even know me. Yeah. Because. That's the internet, bro. That's the internet. And, and, and like, I, I'm me. Like, I'm still a little hood. Like, I, I spent some time mm -hmm. in D.C. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely, like, certified. But, like, I, I said, you want to say something like that? I'll give you my address. Come say it to my face. Right. Got gangster on him. Not so let's gangster. move to the event, man. I want to talk about everything that's going on with this event. I'm so excited about it. So Summer Sesh 2024, is that what it is? Yes. And there's a Facebook group for this as well? Yes, and a Facebook event. And it's listed on Eventbrite for the actual dates to buy tickets. Not only admission, there's sponsor tickets on there as well, vendor tickets, and there's a place for donations if anyone finds it in their heart to donate to the cause because right now Ronnie and I are pretty much paying for everything out of our pockets. Okay. Um, it started off as a Facebook post. Ronnie um, was like, hey, why don't we bring back old school chill sessions? Like no drama, no chaos, like just good old fashioned positivity and fun and networking because there's nothing really around here in this area for us to do that brings those things together. Okay, and Ronnie who? Ronnie Sherfy. Okay. Um, he is the other event owner and organizer. He's not here today, but mm -hmm. we can put him on a different time mm -hmm. closer to the event. He's probably, yeah, he's also a tattoo artist and he does construction. He's amazing at construction. He's like a master carpenter. Um, but Ronnie, Ronnie's good people. Um, it's the, funny cause out of them two things go together. It's like, <laughs> if you can use these tools to do construction though, you feel like you can use about any tool and that machine's just another extension of that. So yeah. I know it's you just know interesting. that. I've never tatted anyone. Yeah. I've never done that. Right. I've been I feel like any tool you give me, I can use one way or the other. Like, I'll figure it out with my hands. I'm so like it's that just interesting like that he's words. a carpenter because I did all that shit for 30 years before I really started tattooing. Then y'all will be best friends. Right. I bet you anything. <laughs> cool. So, yeah, we'll have, to, we'll have to link up with him and meet up. That sounds good. But, uh, yeah, the, the post blew up. He started the group. I joined the group 
and where I have my event planning experience from Cousins Paintball. And I was like watching him do everything by himself. I was like, can you please let me help you? Like, please, please. I'm good at this. Like, y'all are good with like tools and stuff. I'm good with people and words. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Sales, marketing, web design, all that, graphics. And um, so he eventually let me help him. <laughs> and at first we had the Woodstock Fairgrounds and... It didn't quite work out. It wasn't exactly what we were looking for. I don't think we were exactly what they were looking for. I don't want to say that officially, but um, due to the nature of the event and it potentially being somewhere that people may or may not be using cannabis in corners on their own, mm -hmm. not throughout the kid areas, mm -hmm. I feel like that's kind of what was the nail in the coffin for that one. But I reached out to my old boss at Cousins Paintball, and he gave us some ideas we went out to Skyline Ranch Resort, and it's perfect. Like, there are cabins. There are chalets, which I want a chalet because I'm not a camper girl. I'm a Fairfax girl, like, through and through. But the hell is a chalet? They're, like, these cute little houses that look like they're at the beach with, like, they're on stilts and, like. the a little bungalow. Yeah. Okay. But it's a chalet. Okay. Right. But, it's way more classier than a bungalow. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they just called it that because they figured out I had a 703 number right. I don't know but Skyline oh, yeah. Ranch Resort's amazing they have the petting zoo the full stage for our DJs there's a place to do the slip and slide kickball and like all the events that Ronnie has like genius mind brained up um, and the $40 ticket includes tent camping if you want to tent camp on the night of the 9th or the night of the 10th the actual event will be on the 10th from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. There's a $25 ticket that's just for the event. The $40 one includes the tent camping if you want to. If you want to rent a cabin or a chalet, you have to reach out to Skyline Ranch Resort and mention Summer Sash, and they're giving us 10% off. So definitely mention it if you're going to book because mm -hmm. you want to save that money. Um, and I do know Space is Limited. She's going to give me a total of what's left since our announcement last week. But I think all the chalets were almost gone. And if I don't get one, I'm going to be a sad Jana bear. Mm. <laughs> so, About campers, you said they had a campsite Yeah. Too. So campers, I forget the exact numbers. I think it was like 60 bucks. Right, but if night. they have a campsite like that, that means you got a place to plug in. Yeah, there are plenty. Like you Perfect. just have to call them Perfect. and pay for your camper site. Mm -hmm. And you bring it on. And then you said you wanted vendors. Yeah, so we have a few in the works, um, local businesses, big and small, like represent the area. We want to get out there and make it a community thing. Okay, so you got food trucks coming, but you still would have food vendors there if they wanted to come and sell, let's just say it was apple butter or cheeseburgers, yeah, whatever. whatever. Yeah, okay. we have this set. We only have six spots for food trucks. I think three or four are locked in, so there's only two available. If we have any that want to hop on, I know it's last minute. This event literally came out of nowhere like less than two weeks ago, and mm -hmm. we're making it happen. So all of this happening. When's the date that it happens? August 9th through 11th. Okay. And it's at the Skyline Ranch Resort in Front Royal, Virginia. Okay. Um, there's a pool. It's $5 to mm -hmm. get in. You pay them. Like, where else can you be at do all these fun things and have all that? I don't know. I'm excited. It's like a vacation for me. Let's right, go. So you can bring the kids. It's going to be kind of friendly, but it's also going to be kid friendly. Yeah. So in the camping tent area, it's on the other side where parking is like what you do at your tent is your business. We mm -hmm. just can't have it running through the actual event area mm -hmm. where the kids are mm -hmm. for many reasons. Mm -hmm. And we will have a security team. Mm -hmm. We <clears throat> may or may not have off duty Warren County members there to make sure things stay under control especially because the kids and it's our first time doing it so we want to show our gratitude to skyline ranch resort for helping us such in such a big way they're amazing last minute and as well as like make it so we can make this an annual thing right well don't come disrespectful yeah if you come bring your respect exactly right. well and it won't be tolerated so right. if anyone does come right, and right. they get disrespectful like sorry i'm not sorry you're gonna mm -hmm. have to go like you're not ruining anyone else's time mm -hmm. how about alcohol there will be a beverage truck there um, yeah. because the majority of the general population wants it there. I'm sure. not going to be drinking, but it will be there. <clears throat> I don't know, like, if it's going to be a sanctioned area or what, but, yeah. Okay, and then take me to the vendors. You talked about a, like, silver, gold, and bronze or something. Yeah, so the bronze level is $150 for sponsorship. It includes your name on the big event flyers that we're going to be 
pumping to the entire network of Shenandoah, Warren County, Frederick County in the future from now until the event. And we'll also include you in our social media promotion. Silver, you get two more things, and that's $500. You will be on the big event banners at the event and as well as on the T-shirts. So, and this is basically if you have a logo or something to put on. Yeah, there. logo, your name, what have you. Mm-hmm. And like okay. that we can discuss with each vendor what they prefer. We're not like crazy like, oh, my God, you know. Mm-hmm. And we want to look out and we want to have as many people come promote themselves and their business mm-hmm. with all of the people that mm-hmm. we have coming as well, as well as give all of those goods and services to mm-hmm. our people that are coming. It's actually a perfect opportunity if you're trying to like start a business or revamp or anything, especially local. Because a lot of things are online. And I mean, I do online SEO. Like, I know how it is. But the in-person grassroots is what I love about this. And I think it's like bringing it back home, you know. Right. Because these days, it's so often you get caught up in your phone or, like, this website or that. That, like, you're not doing face-to-face anymore. So this Mm -hmm. is all face-to-face fun. For sure. And, like, face-to-face networking. It should be beautiful. It will be beautiful. And then the next step up is gold. Is gold. So that's a 1000 And that would mean you're a headliner sponsor. So on everything, we will announce sponsored by blah, 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 blah. And you get a free vendor table. You get everything in both packages. And I think that was it. Yeah, headliner, free table, bronze, and silver. Okay, so as far as products, what is unacceptable? So we cannot actually sell actual cannot items at this event because that is not the theme of this event. It's family, fun, summer sash, good times. CBD and Delta and like those type products because they're legal to sell <laughs> mm-hmm. will be okay. Okay. Food is okay. Um, shirts, stickers, hats. If you like hand knit stuff and it's something completely unique, jewelry, whatever. I'm trying to think right now. I mean, I'll be offering my Reiki there. Like, if you're spiritual, if you sell crystals, you mm-hmm. know, whatever your business is. If it's lawyers, if it's accounting, mm-hmm. like, if it's... How far is this place from here? It's really only about 25 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Because I think I'm going to take a spot. I'm going to give you 150 bucks. I'm going to take a spot. I don't have a lot of money, but I can give you 150 bucks. I'll take a spot. I might come up and sell some of my shirts or tattoo or just... You make videos my heart so happy. I'll, do, I'll do something because i wanted to put something together like this myself this year i did a facebook live about it we was going to do it at the park we wanted to have a pool so i just feel like dude i'm going to help you instead of even trying to form that whole event myself i'm just going to take that whole di- idea and here's well, that yeah. idea but it turned into this by you so i'll help promote you i'll i'll do whatever and i can I'll do promote you too yay so yeah and i got a I got two different guys that might be interested in something else, at least. Yeah, if people just want to vend and they're not interested in sponsorship at all, it's just one fifty for a table for the day of. Mm-hmm. Same with food trucks; it's one fifty. You come in, all the rest of the profit is yours. Um, and it's the first of many events, so in the future we can do like a Canna event or Oktoberfest mm-hmm. or Fall mm-hmm. Fest. Well, that's that. That's kind of what I want to build too with this podcast, with my channel, with everything here is that community of people that want to chill do the right thing not yeah you know, fuck fentanyl fuck meth fuck pills we're not doing none of that yeah but if you can keep your shit together and drink a little alcohol smoke a little weed i mean we could even throw a recovery event too we'll have it none of that you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying for our community that we're but again from, it's like it's kind of like uh it's for, hard for me i'm like I wanna, I'm, I'm riding that lane of, you know what, I'm clean from the stuff that destroys my life, but I'm going to smoke weed and do what I want to do that doesn't destroy my life. Exactly. And if you can't be okay with that, then I'm sorry, that's on you. And if you're getting high and doing all those things I'm not doing, I got nothing for you. Exactly. Except for help. Yep. Unless you want to get out of that shit, then come around because I'll help you. I got a kid I'm picking up from, the, well, not picking him up from the jail, but taking him to Brightview. And I got another guy just hit me up because his freaking daughter's been on meth and she crashed a car and broke her neck she's in icu and it's just freaking terrible but you know as long as we can have people together that want to have fun and we can all support each other i i like to call it everybody eats yeah i mean if i can help you make money and you can help me make money or you can give me a hamburger and i can give you some eggs you know chicken nuggets exactly is that what you like chicken nuggets (laughs) nuggets, i got the chicken chicken nuggets nuggets. for you right (laughs) i'll get you some chicken nuggets but yeah i'll throw 150 at you and and you know figure out from there i'll probably bring this with me 
Yeah, and I mean, that's what we're here for. And, like, there's no coincidence that we met, too, because, like, we need each other mm-hmm. in here. Mm-hmm. And if we're already doing what you wanted to do, it's for a reason. So we can just keep growing and combine forces. Absolutely. That's what I'm here for. May the force be with us. <laughs> and also with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so cool, man. Uh, yeah, I feel like uh, I'm going to post these in a couple of different places, you know, whatever, so I can separate them up when I edit them. But it, how would you want to end this off? Like, what's your mission statement to the world? What is your purpose? I just want everything to get back to where it needs to be. Like, respect, love, loyalty, peace. Like, there's a lot going on politically right now. There's a lot going on economically right now. People are rearing their ugly heads. They're forgetting where they came from. And we're humans. Like, we need each other. And basically, like, put a bubble over us. Keep that stuff outside. And let's just get back to our roots and do what we're supposed to do and love and help each other. Like, that. that's who I am. Is that a good mission statement? I like that. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, it's very uh, beauty pageant-y. I want to save the world. Right. You know? Right, right. That was perfect. I do have no, a but wellness I get it. business. I get it. And I get that vibe from you as well there. You have a vibe. Everybody has a vibe. Everybody comes in here and they either leave a bunch of shit on me that, that's, you know, hard, or they have a vibe like you and it's more friendly and open and uh, energetic. I'm a not, lot sometimes. Not defensive. Some people can't handle all of mm-hmm. my energy. I'm pretty well, intense. I understand what that's like. That's my life. Yeah. People don't know what to do with me. So exactly. It, but... You don't belong anywhere, but that's why I'm here to but be But I belong that everywhere. We belong everywhere. Light. <laughs> like, right. I will go to right. war for everybody. Since we, since we don't belong anywhere, we just make our own fucking place to be. Exactly. You know what I mean? That's what I do. You don't want me over there, over there? Watch me go over here in this corner and take half of your fucking crowd with you because yep. we're going to have fun over there. Yep. You know what I mean? It ain't going to be all that crying and whining and bitching. Now, I might bitch a little bit if you're late with my food because I get hangry. You know what I'm saying? I'm hungry <laughs> waiting on my shit. Bro. Like, Where's food? the server at? You don't want to see a hangry yeah. Jana Bear. <laughs> it's not fun for anybody. And when I get big mad, like if someone disrespects me or hurts my feelings, I go full on WandaVision. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you want to run? I'm like, <sighs> like my girlfriend Ashley the other day at the lake, this guy, like, he said I was a bad driver because I might have gone 100 miles an hour like when he was supposed to be following me somewhere. But you know, that's what GPS is for. Mm-hmm. And uh, I wasn't even telling him I was going to take him to the store, but he said he wasn't going to ride in my car. And I heard him. And I said, you don't get to put me in a box and tell me X, Y, and Z about myself because you saw me do something once. Mm-hmm. I'm a professional race car driver. I've been doing that my whole life. When I drive fast, it's because I want to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I know what I'm doing. He got like so upset that he walked from the lake to my house to get his own vehicle in 95 degree weather. But Ashley said when I was going in that the lake behind me was rippling and it changed colors. And I was like, <laughs> trust me, I can get upset, but it's for the right reasons. I don't like people getting hurt. I don't like disrespect. I don't tolerate really dishonesty. Like, Yeah, man, it's hard to be in all this stuff with helping people too, though, and, and knowing the fact that 90% of us will come and say things and, and not do them. Like, yeah. oh, please help me with this. And, and, and maybe even spend a couple of three, four, ten days really helping and doing whatever and then just go right back out and fuck it off. Not call, not, and then they're just gone. Or even if you help them with, like, giving them a place to stay or helping them financially and, like, you realize, like, most of them are just using you. Yeah, been there. Yep. Yeah, I get tired of it, but at the same time too, when somebody it's, asks for it's some our help, mission. yeah, right. Like, yeah. how can I not? How can I say no, bro? Yeah, it, I get frustrated too. There's sometimes I don't want to answer the call, but I have to. That's like a God thing. That's a universe thing. Yeah. It's like a a purpose that's here. All right, well, we're gonna close out. Okay. Anything else you want to say? Come to summer session, have fun. Even Absolutely. if you don't vendor sponsor, just come chill. Right. Tickets Buy are tickets. on sale right now. They will. Buy tickets. Increase in price on the 15th, so definitely get them before then. Um, right. It's 25th of July, hmm, so soon. 13 days. Mm-hmm. And the event is in 38 days. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be probably going to be a little different from the time this goes up, but it'll be close. It's okay. What date was it again? July 15th. July 15th. And then the That's event, when the tickets go up, and yep. the event is? August 9th. August you can 9th. come 
at 6 p.m. and set up your tents. There's not going to be a lot going on. Maybe it's a couple food the, trucks. Ninth through the eleventh. Okay. So the it's big three day days. is what August is that? Friday, 10th. Saturday, Sunday. Yep. Okay. But we all okay. So you can arrive Friday at the earliest 6 p.m. There might be a couple food trucks there for staff and volunteers. Set up your camping spot. It's just going to be chill. The next morning is when everything kicks off. So from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. is all the games, the events, the kids stuff, mm-hmm. the big, big mm-hmm. DJs, mm-hmm. all the mm-hmm. crazy. And then Sunday, we all got to clean up and get out of there by like 11. In the morning? Yep. Okay. So that's why we made it. So if people like wanted to come camp. So basically you can come in, set up on Friday, but you got all day Saturday to do the events and then Sunday get the hell out of here. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Eat and get the hell out. <laughs> so if you're renting a spot, you're renting two nights on a tent if you're doing both nights or two nights in a camper. Yeah, well, if you're and the, the $40 ticket includes the two nights tent Okay, camping, so that's the minimum will. ticket too? Well, the 25 is for just the day of. Right. And so then that's the Saturday. At 40 you can camp both nights, one night, whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. We're covering your tent camping. Gotcha. And then if you want to do the camper cabin chalet, you have to contact Skyland Ranch Resort, stay summer sesh, get 10% off. And, yeah, that's it. Summer sesh, 10 10 percent off, dude. That's important. Yep. Especially if you're renting something. Yep. I remember that because I'm gonna need a camper spot. Yeah, and the in the group, there's like announcements about all of it and all the details and exact right. costs, the phone number, the website for Skyline Ranch, all that. I just don't have it right here in front of me because I right. should have been more organized, but I wasn't. It's okay. It's all there. It's okay. In the metaverse. Um. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna put this on my Facebook so. You know what I mean? They'll be able to... I, I'm going to cut a piece of this out to put it on the Facebook, but then also on my YouTube as well. Yes. So, yeah, I'll get that up as soon as possible. I'm so excited. Yeah, this was cool. I appreciate talking to you. You're awesome. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have fun. Uh, I think this will be a good a good event, man. I'm going to try to bring some of my boys. See if I can get bring some of these everybody. monkeys to come up there. Bring all of them. All good people. Mm-hmm. I'll have some fun. I'm excited. I Sweet. really cannot wait. I'm going to be... I'm going to start a twerk contest. Ooh. I don't on know the about adult these, side, man, right? Oh man, the kids are gonna be on like, the "What are y'all doing?" Side, after they go to bed. Okay, I can see that they'll be peeking out windows and stuff. Like, What's mommy <laughs> doing? <laughs> my son will be like, "Oh my god, too, right? here she goes here again." Here she goes again. I told he's, her not to do that. He's so funny. His name's Houston, and I'm like, "Houston, we have a problem." And he's like, "Mom, you have a problem." <laughs> mm. Yeah, I probably got tired of that one too. When I told him I was coming here to do a podcast with you, he was like, "Well, make sure he sends it to you so I can make fun of you later." <laughs> mm-hmm. Kids, that's how they are, right? Yeah, I mean, he's 15, 16 almost. Where does the time go? All right, so I'm not even sure what part of the video you are watching right now, but y'all could drop a comment. You know, I'm gonna leave her name in the title, and your name is also how you get to you on Facebook, right? Yeah, and on Instagram and TikTok, I'm the Reiki Rockstar Realtor. So if anyone does want Reiki or help with Virginia real estate, I'll add West Virginia shortly. Mm-hmm. Or SEO, web design, blogging, or event planning. Mm-hmm. I'm your girl. Outstanding. Mm-hmm. All right, man, so till the next time, don't sweat the petty things, pet the sweaty things. Woo.